I'm Simon Dewsbury, PGA staff professional here at Belmont Country Club. We're going to continue with our tour around the golf course. We're looking at hole 13 right now. It's a really good par five. It's a longer hole. It's a big risk and reward hole, which we'll talk about when we get out there. <coughs> and I've got to stop because I've got the fly in my throat. I'm Simon Dewsbury, PGA staff professional here at Belmont Country Club. We're continuing the tour around the golf course. We're looking at hole 13 right now. This is a really good par five. It's one of our longer holes. It's a really good risk and reward tee shot and second shot going for or laying up from the green. We'll figure that out as we go. We're gonna take a look at it in depth. We're also gonna to start to talk about nutrition levels because this is probably the point in the round where we're beginning to lose our energy levels. Let's go. Hole 13 is a long par five, 585 from the gold tees up to 415 from the forward tees, but a really, really interesting hole, one we really need to think about. Uh, the tees are really spaced out, as we can see here, and small hazards up the right-hand side with these fairway bunkers. The big one here, though, that's key is the penalty area that's up the left-hand side that then drifts across short of the green. So we, after the tee shot, that's going to dictate to us whether or not we're going to be able to use this as a risk and reward hole. Take the risk on going at the green with our second shot, and give ourselves a chance for eagle, or whether it's better to play safe and play a layup shot here and then, it's, then go into the green, giving ourselves a chance potentially for birdie, but more often than not, um, a cast iron par, no worse than bogey for a handicapped golfer rather than trying to take that risk on and, and run the risk of going into the penalty area and having drops and, and a high score running up. It's a really interesting hole. I really like it. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, 13th tee, looking from the goals here, um, it is a big dog leg around to the left. We do really want to get the ball working around with the fairway. I've got the wind pushing behind me right now. So my line, I'm coming, if we look over from the bunker, we've got the big wide open section for the houses and then we've got a big green tree followed by two little yellower trees where the leaves are colouring yellow for the winter. And then we've got a chimney on the top of the house over there. That's gonna be where I wanna start the golf ball off and then work it around there to the left from that point. This is a smaller tee, so I'm not gonna be as concerned with forcing myself to set up on the left-hand side to create that movement. We're already on the left-hand side of the tee, so that's kind of helping to promote that feel for me. So setting up my practice swings and trying to feel the shot that I'm trying to hit not necessarily swinging at full speed just kind of rehearsing my moves to try and create the feel of that draw shot step into it last look at my target refreshes my mind where i want to go and then just hit it out there coming straight at that chimney and then kick left when it landed. So that's a really nice result for me. Quite a significant distance here between the golds and the blues. The angle changes quite a lot as well. So when we get up here, the viewpoint and that I had my target line from the chimney stack off the gold tees really now is a bit too far right. I would actually be looking more towards the right edge of the far fairway bunker it would be where I want to start the golf ball off. But again, still playing a draw if I can work it around with the, the positioning of this fairway as a dog leg to the left. It's 
So as we get up here onto the white tees again, we've lost yardage. It's now only 514, so 30 yards difference from blue to whites, but it, we've moved further over as well with the tee box. So the viewpoint for where I'm actually going to play my tee shots changed. The gold tees was onto the chimneys, which are now hidden by the trees. The blue tee, I was at the right edge of that fairway bunker here. I would even go towards the left edge of that bunker or might be easier to pick it up on the camera, the gap in between the houses as my start line. It's a 60 yard wide fairway though, so we do have a big margin for error with our tee shot. So we don't have to get too precise off the tee. It really is about making sure we get the ball into play so that we've got options as we play our second and maybe third shots into the green. Well, let's take a look up there though now at the green tees and the forward tees. As we move up here now onto the green tees, it's 470, still a long hole. Um, the viewpoint really hasn't changed much from the white tees as we moved up here. We're still going to be aiming towards the gap between the two trees, more towards the left hand side of that fairway bunker. And the fairway, as I said, is really, really wide. So there's a huge margin for error. We want to try and make the hole as short as possible. So we do want to try and favor the left hand side but don't get too aggressive because we do have the penalty area down on that left. As I said, the tiger line, the, the ideal line would be to go at the gap in the houses. The tiger line would be to go a little bit further left towards the power line that we can see in the far distance. But anywhere between those two would be your ideal tee shot. If we do drift a little bit further right, we've got the, the hazards up the right hand side from the fairway bunkers. And if you go way, way right, We've got the out of bounds posts because of the houses and their back gardens. So we do want to kind of favor the left hand side if we can. Right, as we move here now, we're up on the red tees, the forward tees. The viewpoint has changed a lot as well. Um, we're pretty close now to the actual back edge of the fairway and we're over to the right hand side. So the viewpoint has drifted to the left every single tee box now as we move forwards and we realistically want to be looking towards the back deck of the house that's through the trees is our start line that's going to split the middle of the fairway and we've got a 55 60 yard wide fairway to aim into depending on just how far down we can get with our tee shot is going to dictate what we're going to do in terms of where we want to lay up for our third maybe two layup shots to get us into the right position for our fourth shot to go at the flag. Again, if we're playing from here, we've got our handicap allowance. Don't make the, hard, the hole harder than it should be. We're looking at this fairway bunker shot right now. We've obviously talked in detail about that in another video, so go and check that one out. But we're gonna look at three different options. So obviously three different golf clubs from the fairway wood, a mid iron and a wedge, depending on where the golf ball is and how it's sitting in relation to the faces of the bunkers. If you do end up here in the bunker on the right hand side, uh, we've thrown three golf balls in just to kind of highlight our different options. So if we've got a golf ball that's kind of just fallen into the back edge, as you can see, we've got this really big, wide open expanse of bunker right in front of us. So we could play pretty much any club we want. I've got my three wood out for this one. Um, over here on the right hand side, we've got the golf ball that's gonna be impeded a little bit by the, the peninsula and the shoulder of that bunker there, but it's far enough back that we could still play a kind of medium iron. I've got a six iron for that one. And then the one that's further up is almost underneath the front lip there. So we've got to contend with the, the slope and the shoulder of that bit of the bunker coming into play right in front of us. So we're going to play a much more lofted club there and use the wedge, just make sure we get the ball back into play, minimize the problems and make sure that we can keep going without anything too serious happening to us. But I'm going to start off with this one here on the back and let's see what we can do. So again, big wide open fairway to go at. I'm just gonna try and split the middle of the fairway. Gripping down just a little bit to offset the fact that I'm digging my feet into the ground.
and advance it up. Well, pushed it a little bit, but no serious implications from that. So we can carry on playing without any real problems. With this one up on the right hand side, the ball's a little bit above my feet as well, so it's going to kind of favor hitting a draw shot. I'm going to aim it more towards the right hand side of the fairway and let the, the shot dictate itself to me and work the ball around to the left. Again, because of that, I'm going to grip down to offset the fact that I'm, grip, I'm shuffling my feet down into the sand a little bit, a little firmer in my hands. Minimize my wrist hinge. And get it back into play. And walk out the same way we walked in so we don't have a huge amount of bunker to rake when we get the rake back in our hands. So with this option here, we do have the lip right in front of me, so I can't really get aggressive with my choice of club. Just use something that's lofted, get the ball out and get it back into play. More of an awkward stance, I'm gonna have one foot out of the bunker, one foot in. So again, just make sure that I'm, I'm not building a stance, but I'm just making sure that my foot is secure, that I can play into it. I'm gonna kind of lean with the slope a little bit. My follow through might be a little bit curtailed because of the face of the bunker, so solid contact is going to be really important on this. Got lucky that my follow through went through as well as it did, and I was able to advance the ball well. But make sure you've got that solid base to, to play the, the shot from, and focus on making sure you get solid contact, and don't worry too much about the follow through if it hits into there and stops the follow through, that's fine. The ball's already gone at that point, but don't kind of shy out of the shot because of the potential to hit into the face. Commit to the shot that you want to play. Make sure the golf ball goes where you want it to. On the left-hand side of this hole, we do have the red state penalty area. And a question that's been raised from one of our viewers is, how can I play this particular shot? So it's one of our members that's asked this. What are my options? Well, the options if I go in here would be to go back and replay from where I last was. I can take my two club lengths out, going no nearer to the hole. But the question that was raised was, if I can tell you where the flag is, can I go through that point from the flag, keeping my point of entry in and try and get back to the fairway? The answer to that would be yes, you can, if you can pinpoint where the flag is, because that is gonna be key to dictating where your line is. Now, if the camera pans around, I've realistically got no way of guaranteeing I can tell you even where the green is, let alone where the flag is positioned. So, although technically it's an option, the realistic answer to that would be no, you can't take this point and keep it in between me and the flag and go back as far as I want to because I have no idea where that flag is. Even with my yardage book and my pin sheet, I couldn't tell you exactly where it is because I've got no way of seeing through this thicket of trees to actually give me the location of the green. So my options are gonna be really to go back and replay from where I last was or take my two club lengths and play from there. All right, if I'm taking my drop, I'm not gonna measure it out right now because this is just for the purposes of the video. Where am I gonna play? I wanna make sure that I get it back into play. I'm gonna try and advance it as far down as I can so that I can then try and have a shot at the green. I don't wanna try and cut too much of this corner off and run the risk of running into these overhanging branches. So I'm gonna have to try and drift out 
a little bit more towards the left edge of the bunker, towards that gap in the houses again, and try and work a draw around the trees. It's not necessarily going to be too easy, depending on how the ball lies once you've taken the drop. So this one's sitting up quite well, but you've got this wispy grass that's in between the ball and, and the club face as you come in. That might cause a slight issue in getting as much spin on it as I want to. So again, pick your yardages, look at where you're going. How far down do I want to get? If I can get it close to that bunker, have I got a good chance of going at the green and where that flag position is, which today is only eight yards on and three from the right hand side. Do I want to get to a point where I'm aggressive? A little bit more towards the middle of the fairway or push it out to the right hand side knowing that I can only then attack the middle of the green not necessarily go at that flag location because it is front right corner. Yeah, well within my two club links. go not the best strike in the world but it's got it down where I want it and I am up the right hand side of the the fairway there so we'll see how that one plays out with our approach shot into the green all right so this is what our sprinkle heads show you we've got the three different yardages on there 245 is representative of the front edge 277 to the back edge and 261 is the yardage to the middle of the green with our pin sheets here, uh, we just had our club championship, so this was day two's pin sheet. Uh, we can see there we've got two different measurements. So we've got this highlighted bit at the top is minus 10. That's actually telling us whether it's short of or past the middle of the green. So 261 off that sprinkle ahead was to the middle. It would be minus 10 to the flag, so 251 to the flag there. And then the other option would be to go off the front edge, which was 246 plus eight from the front edge, that gets us to 253. So slight discrepancy between those two yardages there of two yards, I might split the difference and go 252. Looking at my options though, that, that green is tucked around, the, around behind these trees. We've got the penalty area that drifts across the front of the green. From this far out, do I really want to go at it I've got a club that will get me there, my three wood's going to get me there, but it's a small green, the risk on that shot is too big, so I'm going to take an option and get me close to it and give me my little pitch shot distance of either 50 yards or 100 yards, my two preferred options for distances. So something that's going to hit it down 190, 200 yards into the fairway to give me my 50 yard shot into the green, or 150 out to leave me with 100 yards. Um, with the wind coming behind me, I think we can get down there quite well. Nice and easily, nice smooth six iron should get us down into the, the little slot to give me a little 50 yard pitch shot. The wind's pushing with me. Off this lie is probably actually gonna kind of knock the ball down a little bit. So a solid swing with my six iron should get me down to the area that I want to play my wedge shot into the green then it's just picking out my line uh, I've got the drainage hole right in front of me here and then the yardage block as well in front of me I'm going to kind of split the two of those it's a nice big visual for me to go through the gate post there feel my shot out and then commit to it A 
and that should get me down to somewhere in that 50 yard range where I can play an easy little pitch shot into the flag. So if we've had to play the recovery shot, whether it's from the fairway bunker or if it's because we've knocked it into the, the penalty area on the left hand side, we want to try and give ourselves our preferred yardage. It's a little bit more of a sloping lie than I would have preferred. I would have preferred to have been a little bit closer to the middle of the fairway from that sh the recovery shot we played out of the rough on the left. But I've got 106 into the flag here. So I'm within my comfortable distance to play my wedge into this flag. So be smart, take your medicine, but plan out how far you want to get so that your next shot is as easy as possible. Don't just try and smash it as far down there as you can and give yourself a, a funny little yardage that you're not comfortable in playing. All right, we're not going to have a picnic in the middle of the 13th fairway, but it's just kind of highlights. We want to talk about um, our energy levels and nutrition as we're going around the golf course. Obviously, we're in the middle of 13 right now, so we're beginning to get to a point where people are generally seeing a drop off in their energy levels. Um, this was explained to me quite simply years and years ago by the nutritionist for the English national squad and the Curtis Cup team that we have breakfast in the morning, we load our body up so we get our energy store up here and then as we're working throughout the day, it's beginning to lower down. And then we have lunch and we spike it back up again and then we go down towards our evening meal and then it spikes up again and falls off before we go to bed. The problem with that as we're playing golf is that we're losing energy all the time and it is, although it's, it's a more leisurely sport than a lot of others, we are using up a store of energy quite quickly. So the Dunkin' Donuts would be great because we give us a massive energy spike with the sugar rush, but we're also going to kind of hit a wall and it's going to drop through the floor as well. Realistically, what we want to look at is staying away from the caffeine. We want to have water or um, energy drinks. Um, we want to have fresh fruits so we get natural sugars, natural salts into our system. You could go with something like the Nature Valley granola bars as well, or trail mix. This is a really good kind of blend then, staying away from the sugar, from the donuts and the coffee. Kind of half a banana, piece of a granola bar, a handful of trail mix, every two or three holes as we're going around the golf course with a little bit of fluids every single hole will stop us from losing that energy and it kind of levels off and instead of having the big peaks and troughs we have little waves instead where we're maintaining a more constant energy level around the golf course um, it was told to me so if we're going to have this we want to make sure that we can just like a handful of trail mix so not a huge amount not trying to eat half the bag but something like that every two or three holes it's a mixture there of, of fruit We've got a little bit of chocolate in there as well, so we get a little bit of sugar, and then we've got the, the energy store from the peanuts as well. So if you don't have a peanut allergy, this is a really good way of doing it. And now all that is then is, is a couple of mouthfuls of that, but every two, three holes, something like that amount. So again, half a granola bar, half the banana, half of the apple, every three holes is ideal, but always topping up with fluids, preferably water, not alcohol. All right, as you can see, <clears throat> the way that this penalty area runs all the way across, and it is such a narrow and small target, the risk with the second shot trying to go for it really isn't worth taking on unless you're somebody like Dustin Johnson who's going to hit you know, a really big tee shot and go into it with a medium iron, kind of no more than a five iron. I'd maybe take it on as a second choice, a second shot option, but realistically, take your layup, get yourself into a position where a short little pitch shot with a wedge can attack the flag. 
because I don't really want to be going into a green this size with something that's got three wood or hybrid loft into it. A little bit of a pull. Oh. Ten foot putt, I'll take it. So as we begin to approach the green, I'm about 40 yards away now. I'm beginning to really start to pay attention to what I'm seeing in front of me. I can see that it's high up on my left, coming down towards the water. So that's going to tell me that the overriding slope is going to give me a left to right break. And now as I get close in, I'm going to go through my housekeeping duties and repair the pitch mark that's my first priority make sure that the green is in good condition for the people that are going to be playing behind me and then mark the ball so that I'm cleaning it as I'm looking at my slopes and figuring out what's going on Look out to the wide aspects so you're seeing everything. Don't get sucked into tunnel vision just looking at the ball to the hole. Don't drop the towel on your visual line. And you're not getting penalized for giving yourself target aids. And the same setup routine every time. A nice easy birdie. So obviously I'm walking into the green as if I was playing it tournament level where we have caddies and we're, we're not using golf carts. If we were using the golf carts we'd be staging the carts over on the back of the green and walking in that way so we're still using the visuals and viewpoints looking from that angle looking down I'm still going to see that the green is high on that side pushing down here but again, once I get in close, don't just get the tunnel vision of looking at the ball to the hole. See the whole visuals of the green and pick out all the slopes and it'll make things a lot clearer in your mind rather than trying to guess just by seeing that tunnel vision view. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get all the alerts for when we post new videos. Also, leave us some comments on what you like, what you don't like, and anything that you want to see going forwards. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.